Hey, Hi. Hi. It says, yeah, it says you can't start your video because the host has stopped it. Oh, okay. Let's see here. I know the Zoom world, right? Your hair looks nice. <laughs> I got this. Well, I've had it for a while. It's called a Dyson hair wrap. Oh yeah, Siobhan has that. It's yeah, so amazing. It's worth every penny. Yeah, I mean, I'm gonna maybe have to yeah look into this. I'm so impatient with my hair though. I never make like time for it. You have the most beautiful hair though. It's just I know the type of hair you have. We have very similar hair. You yeah. have to really work with it. It looks great yeah. when it's fixed, right? Right. So it takes some time. Yeah, I don't know why it's not letting me. If you go, you know how you can like look at like at participants and attendees. Like if you click on like if you click on participants, you'll see like attendees, participants, and then mm. you should be able to like um unlock my video oh, i see i see i see yeah okay the, um you should have that control um if not you might have to go into zoom but i i it looks like i can share my screen which is great that's really interesting though because it's like make host i'm just gonna make oh that should work all right let me see here um i am the host now well I am going to take, it won't let me do it. That's so oh, good. Here. Okay, great. And then I can, I can make you the host again if you want. No, no, so, I think we're good this way because I don't have anything to share. That okay. blue is really pretty behind you, Christine. Oh, thank you. This, this is my office. It's so so cute. Um, you should come visit and, ha and just even hang out and we can see patients together. It'd be fun. I think that I need to come see you, actually. So. I really, really, I love that. We yeah. could have fun and um, you could just see kind of what we do and all the things. And well, you know, I buy bio, regulatory medicine, in my opinion, is the medicine of the future. Oh, and yeah. Anyone who is I think we have some attendees already here on the on the panel. Oh, yeah. I know we're just chatting. Yeah. Hi, guys. <laughs> but anyone who who is here, I feel like is here to hear about bioregulatory medicine and like the. I mean, I call it magic, like it's literally magical medicine. And so, and they're, they're ready. They're the, they're, the, this is the initiation for them into bioregulatory medicine because yes. what lymph is one of the most important things, I think. Oh yeah. You know, and I think um, you, we're going to talk about fascia and we're going to talk about lymph today. And really, when you think about um, the bioregulatory kind of message around terrain medicine, in my opinion, like that's the terrain at the end of the day, because it's like this fabric that connects us um, within us and also to the fields around us. And, you know, that's what we can optimize and be empowered to, you know, really heal. And all the things that we're up against really um, interrupt that communication within the fascial fabric and in the lymphatic system. So we're gonna have fun. We'll talk all so about like it. You're talking to me personally. Someone's yeah. already asked to uh, put a q and in and they said, they're sorry, I had a bad week. Um, I'm not, I have very loud energy so when i'm unhappy i feel like it's hard for Aww. me to out. but thank you for anyone out there who's watching i appreciate you guys very much actually it's ironic that we're talking about the lip and the fascia today because this is my weakest area and probably where i'm storing all the trauma from the medical boards who are attacking me right now mm -hmm. so i just really appreciate all your guys kind words it's so it helps me so much thank you so much Oh, well, you are so loved and you have made such a difference in this community, Jess, and I just really want you to like feel that. Um, I have patients who come to see me all the time and they'll be like, well, Dr. Jess said, or like Dr. Jess did this or Dr. Jess, you know, so you have opened people's minds who might not have ever found their way into like an office like my, mine or, you know, started thinking about how um, to really heal their body. So I just really want you to feel like your impact and no matter what kind of muck is going around with like the forces that need to kind of lose control um they're putting up a fight right and oh gosh i felt like i was totally attacked yeah and i didn't do well at all with it so yeah i think you guys we're going to talk about it and i this lecture is also going to help heal me because i literally if you guys don't know i feel like i put it out there on social media so christine if you don't mind it's 12 i'm going to start giving an introduction oh, yeah. yeah yeah please let's do it take over um yeah. dr christine schaffner you guys i think most of you guys are here because you know me online and we ran it through my instagram but if you don't follow her you should follow dr schaffner right now um i told her this morning personally in a text i think she's a genius and it's the truth 
Um, seriously, she, you should see her clinic. You should see the medicine she practices. I mean, if I was going to go back and have a license again and practice, I would do what Dr. Christine does. And I would have be like, be my mentor and I'll come have shadow you. Mm. So it's not a lot of times you hear a medical doctor say that to a, to a naturopathic doctor in today's twisted society. Um, but she has it right, you guys. And if you don't know what bioregulatory medicine is, I hope you'll give a little introduction, Dr. Christine, because it's really, you guys are here hearing the medicine of the future. And because you signed up for this webinar and because you're here today, you are you are being initiated into it and you're ready to hear it. And for some reason you're here and this this information is gonna be life changing for all of you guys. So if you don't know Dr. Schaffner, she's the best, you guys please give her a follow. Oh, thank cool. you <laughs> Well, thank you, Dr. Jess, and um, the feeling is mutual. And for those who have just joined us, I just want all of us to love up on Dr. Jess all the time. I mean, she is a pioneer. She really, you know, came out of this field of energy, like in the medical system, you know, you get hazed, you get indoctrinated, you can spend your whole life not waking up to the real truth of how we're wired to heal. You can fall asleep. And she woke up and she has created such a vibration without waking up and i just you know it's not the easier path i mean she could just be collecting checks you know in the hospital you know and this is the harder path and um you know she needs the community and love um, that she gives to all of us so i just want you to feel that for everyone who tunes in and we're gonna have fun today you know so i love talking about this and um, you know, we have this really wonderful friend group, Dr. Jess and I are part of, and, you know, we're really committed to sharing each other's messages on each other's platforms. And we all have like a piece of the story and we just want to get it out there because there are so many people who need help and none of us can serve them all, <laughs> you know, so however we can join forces to do that, um, that is really in our hearts. And that's why we, I think all connected and why we're on the planet during this time. So my goal today i have like a slide deck because that's just how my brain works but we we can you know use that as a guide and you know i definitely want jess and i to have a conversation and you know usually i you know do questions at the end but just if you feel like you're seeing questions or anything come up feel free to interrupt me and we can talk about that and we'll wait till the end i see them coming up and i see your guys questions and i promise you will answer them so just hang tight yeah, great. So, dun da da. Everyone can see this. Um, so, I am calling this solutions for your fa um, for your fascia, which I'm calling your living matrix. And you'll see me evolve this topic. And this is kind of where I want to start because, you know, in some of our circles where we're talking to professionals, I'm even like pushing the edge like around fascia, and you know, saying it's really the fabric for our quantum communication. So if you're like there already with me, like you know, think about that right and if you're not that's okay we're, we're going to start and we're going to make sure all of us get up to speed and um what we'll cover today is really how the fascia is our inner internet our water irrigation system and the key to help keeping our cells healthy and recovering from anything any label that you have out there if you're not looking at this system you're missing a big piece of your healing um and also you know we talk about like the fascia we talk about the lymph and they're connected and you know when we think about bioregulatory medicine and this medicine of the future you know it's a system of interconnection within us and around us and between us and you know, when we study medicine, even in anatomy, right, the nervous system's yellow, the arteries are red, the veins are blue, the green, you know, the lymph is green. And we think about like, you go to these specialists, right? You go to like the neurologist and the gastroenterologist and the cardiologist. And, you know, some, you know, minds will start maybe thinking of a different system and how they might be connected, but they're very much in their lane. And that's not at all how the human body works. We are a highly interconnected system. And the more that you know that knowledge, the more you have all of these tools to heal whatever you need to heal. So the lymph is within the fascia and works to uh, in concert to drain our extracellular matrix and keep our immune systems resilient. Um, and we'll talk about some solutions and products for this living matrix, this fabric within us. And when we talk about bioregulatory medicine, I just, again, um, 
because Jess asked me to give you a little bit of an update about that. So bioregulatory medicine is like this beautiful medicine that came out of Europe and specifically like Austria and Germany and Switzerland and really like um, brought in ancient wisdom kind of with like the knowledge of the time and you know really the um, pioneers there talked about it's really not about like what's going on in the cell it's what's going on in the environment and that really dictates what's going on in the cell so it really kind of changed you know the conversation there like the environment matters and then you know decades later later we know about epigenetics right the environment is everything right um and then there's like some key concepts in bioregulatory medicine um one is that we're all you know born with this beautiful innate intelligence and we have this healing energy within us and our jobs as doctors and physicians and practitioners is to identify and facilitate the removal of the roadblocks that are keeping that healing energy from doing what it knows how to do best. And many of those obstacles are man-made, right? So it's like conventional dentistry, like just ruining people's lives, you know, God bless the dentist, but you know, they're often doing things that really are tragic for our health, like the amalgam fillings, the root canals and the cavitations that go untreated. Um, so all of that is a whole course we could talk about. Um, you know, then we also look at bioregulatory uh, medicine, like the effects of like scars and how that interrupts the fascia. I'm going to talk about scars today, so you'll get that. Um, and then we talk about, you know, like um, definitely this um, you know, regulation ability that starts in this, what we call extracellular matrix. And I'm gonna walk you through this through line from inside the cell, the extracellular matrix, the lymphatics and the fascia, um, and it's all in interconnected. So we're gonna do that today. Did that help um, kind of set the stage for, you know, bioregulatory medicine? Anything you wanna add? Cause you've been such a great student of this medicine. I know I love it so much. Um, you guys, it's really about connecting, in my opinion, the, the, like Christine said, Dr. Christine said, the, the physical, the mental, and the emotional, and the spirit all in one in medicine and how the body is interconnected rather than going to all these specialists, like she said, it's connecting it all to one piece. And then where is there a certain interference, right? As you guys call it, in the field of the body or the emotions or the spirit. And those interferences can be infections, they can be teeth, they can be scars, it can be trauma. Yeah, totally. And this fascial fabric we're going to talk about is affected by toxicants, pathogens, and trauma. So it's where all the action is in the body. So. <laughs> Um, all right, so we'll get in. So this, you know, these are pictures that I'll share um, are from this amazing hand surgeon and this French hand surgeon, Dr. Jean-Claude Gumberto. And if you want to study all this, you can Google it. You can see the YouTube videos. He has a beautiful book called The Architecture of Human Living Fascia. And the, the big, you know, um, brilliance around this is he studied living fascia. And Dr. Jess and I did cadaver lab with dead fascia. So dead fascia is, you know, you just cut through it. You think, oh, it's just saran wrap. It has no other function than structural holding the muscles together. Um, and, you know, you move on. And then when you look in the living body, it's this beautiful network and this beautiful um, network we're going to dive into and learn more of. But this is a picture of living fascia. So he th did this in the, I think, early 2010s, like that he had the technology to tourniquet the hand. So it's the blood is out and then use um, a microscope that he could see in a very microscopic level during his surgeries, which is wild, right? And this is what he saw. And he was amazed and he turned his life into this. And what he did um, is really, you know, kind of what I'm saying when when we're in bioregulatory medicine, you're going to hear us say like extracellular matrix, interstitial tissue, um, you know, uh, connective tissue, fascia, and nobody like really knows how to describe it. And then he gives the umbrella version called, um, he says fascia, and he just names it. And he says it's a tensional, continuous fibrillar network within the body extending from the surface of the skin to the nucleus of the cell. The global network is mobile, adaptable, fractal, and irregular. It constitutes the basic structural architecture of the human body. So what he's saying, and what I'll share too, and one another brilliant mind who's educated me, uh, Dr. James Oshman, or Jim, he goes by, <laughs> um, he, um, he, he names it the living matrix and they're identical definitions, the skin to the nucleus of the cell. So that's wild, right? So 
Therapies on the skin are communicating to your DNA. <laughs> you have the power to change your epigenetic um, expression by body work and topicals and working with, you know, all of this wonderful, um, you know, this fabric that starts in the skin. So um, I thought just a second, Dr. Schaffner, did you guys hear what she said? You have the potential to change your epigenetics. Yeah on this tissue that's how that's why we have a whole webinar for free for you guys on this because yeah. it's a big a deal like this is such an unusual concept for i think everyone to grasp because we have been told the exact opposite and we haven't been told exactly what this is and we haven't understood it so i need you to understand what dr christine just said is so important because it puts health and healing in your hands again yeah oh thank you thanks jess so it's also this water irrigation system. So all of us who are into bioregulatory medicine and alternative medicine, we're like down the water rabbit hole, right? So <laughs> we're you know, all into structured water and coherent water and deuterium depleted water and hydrogen water and blah, 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 blah. You know, we love water because a lot of, you know, water is what we're made of and, you know, water is a huge um, communication tool in the body. And so my friends, um, Dr. Dana Cohen and Gina Bria wrote a book called Quench. So again, if you want to learn more about this idea of structured water, and they talk about how fascia is, um, you know, a hidden irrigation system in the body. Um, it's also an electrical system in the body conducted by water that sends cell to cell communication instantly. It's our inter um, internet. And to work well, it needs to be fully hydrated. And for uh, the fascia works with movement. So Gina taught me by moving your body and moving your fascia, you're hydrating your tissues. So it's like a whole different world, right? And it's also this fiber optic network that again, I, I'll touch on a little bit, but that's kind of what I'm lecturing with the doctors that it's this, um, uh, it, it delivers electronic, photonic, biophononic, information in the body. Our bodies communicate not only with water and um, electricity and electrons, but with light and sound, which is all kind of waves of the same thing, um, just different expressions, right? So, um, and then if you're a nerd like we are, um, Mei Wan Ho, you'll want to look up her brilliant work. She's passed, but she was a biophysicist, um, Chinese biophysicist, who talked a lot about the crystalline water in the fascia as a superconductor. She figured that the fascial network was similar to the acupuncture meridian system and that the acupuncturists have it right when you unblock the resistance in the fascia you open up communication or chi in the body you know so that that was big you know for me when i you know read all that so okay. and correct me if i'm wrong here on this you know yeah. i've always heard you know it's a the, the water in the fascial system is in a fourth phase of water, like a gel-like system almost. It's, think about it, guys. If you cut yourself and you bleed, you don't bleed water. Yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> totally. Tom Cowan wrote a book, um, and he doesn't believe in cells anymore, but in his book before that, which I actually really think is a great book, um, I think it's The New Biology of Water and Cancer, and he, he talks a lot. Surgeons cut people open, and they're not like, flowing out water we cut ourselves a great point and you know fascia is carrying this plasma water which is, is this fourth state of water this fourth state of matter the plasma and plasma water i have a slide on the structured water is gel like it um, has a negative charge it holds information um, it helps to exclude we call them exclusion zones in the body it excludes other kind of toxicants um, so it helps to like basically keep that space where that fourth phase of water, um, you know, free from a lot of things that, you know, are, um, you know, negatively impacting us. So yeah, it's it's this gel like plasma and you can see like, this is like gel water, you know, so this, it's not only really carrying this water, it is this water, I, you know, in my you know, opinion. And then this, these beautiful like water droplets, right, in the fascial network. And then, you know, because it gets confusing, right? Because, okay, where's the lymph? What's the fascia? You know, how do we look at all this? So the lymph is within the fascia. So the, again, 
um, you don't have to worry so much like, okay, how does, I need to move my lymph, I need to move my fascia, like you're doing it all, right? They're all connected. So the lymphatic network is located within our fascia. And since the lymphatic system does not have that um, heart, like the circulatory system to pump the lymph, it relies on our body's movement um, by um, the muscles and the fascia to squeeze the lymphatic vessels and push the lymph through this low pressure hose-like system. So when the fascia is healthy and hydrated and on our restricted, um, the lymph can move more easily through um, it towards the neck for removal. So, you know, when we're thinking about the lymph, which will go a lot through, so don't worry if you don't get it this first time, but, um, you know, it's the the kind of all the lymph, once it's kind of drained and finds its way back to the circulatory system and empties itself most of the body into the thoracic duct, which is kind of like right in this area. And then we have the right lymphatic duct on the right side that drains the right side of the head, the right arm in the right upper chest um, and then the left side does the whole rest so um so the point is that the fascia helps the lymph move right um so and you know it's kind of this this is like the human body right you know we got the collagen and the um elastin and the fibroblasts and the mast cells and you know all of this in the space and you know we have fluid you know in the space which you know not only in the lymphatic networks but um you know in the extracellular space um, and we'll go through this more so we have more pictures. So just to touch on this, I, I like talking about the interstitium because it's kind of like all the same thing, but it's a newly discovered organ. We're discovering new things all the time in the human body. So when you think science is science and has figured everything out, that's, you know, we're always evolving. <laughs> we always know. I mean, I remember taking immunology class at the University of Virginia undergrad, and I remember my teacher even saying what I'm teaching you today will be different in three years you know like it was just like we we know that you know we're we're always learning about the human body so these parts of the lymphatic system and the fascia are keep on being discovered as our technology is able to look at them in the living body versus the dead body and so the interstitium is this new organ and you think about okay so we have the mucosa and the skin and then and when we learned histology and you know cadaver lab all that stuff you just think okay it's just all these sheets of collagen there's no space and what it's saying is like hey no it's actually full of this water <laughs> this fluid and what we think about it it's like this pre-lymph or this you know pre um interstitial fluid that helps to be like a shock absorber for the space also and when we think about using the skin to get to the nucleus of the cell, you know, this interstitium helps to deliver that water, you know, that, um, let me say that this way, this interstitium helps to deliver, you know, that information, whatever you're putting on the skin deeper into the, the body, if that makes sense. So um, it's, it's like a fluid filled highway in the body. So again, a new organ, and it's really the largest organ in the body when we think about it. So wild right and who's to say this isn't a smart organ we have a brain oh yeah totally it doesn't have its own consciousness why isn't it smart and able to interconnect and talk to our brain and give us responses back and we've been just thinking that these are not intelligent of their own that make up up, up us it's all over us why wouldn't it have its own intelligence yeah love it love love that point yeah of course you know everything in the body is sensing feeling you know, full of information, right? Um, I think that's a great point. Um, and this is just kind of like the point around the lymphatic system. And this is in Dr. Jean-Claude Gumberto's book, this is a lymphatic vessel. So it's very different from like, you know, this green, you know, vessel, you know, in the capillary space. So just a visual there, we're gonna again, dive into how all this works. Um, so if you're like, do I have lymph congestion, right? So symptoms of lymph congestion, like pretty much everything, right? So brain fog, insomnia, sinus congestion, allergies, breast swelling, prior dementias, constipation, edema, pain, cellulite, frequent sore throats, itchiness, acne, all, all of it. So if you're probably on the call and wanting to heal something, you probably have lymph stagnation. I've just, again, why I became so passionate about this topic is not only what the folks, you know, who taught me bioregulatory medicine taught me, but also what my patients taught me. I, I have clear, vivid memories of some of my earliest patients and when they started moving their lymph, they got better. Um, and, you know, that, that just always struck me, so. 
Um, so again, like I'll walk you through like how does the system work. So the circulatory system is really interrelated with the lymphatic system. A whole aside is why I'm really passionate about keeping people's blood healthy and blood flowing with COVID and spike protein and all the modern day toxicants that are making our blood really clumpy and, you know, um, like sticky and, you know, damaging the lining of the blood vessels. That has an impact on our lymphatic system. So I, we're in trouble if we have stagnant lymph we are stagnant blood we have stagnant lymph so you know again this is just like high level that we have the circulatory system and then how when blood leaves the heart it's oxygen rich and it finds its way into these microcirculation these capillaries into the tissue space and what happens is much of the blood that finally makes its way to that really um, very small network on um, in the capillary space a lot of the blood leaves the capillary and it becomes pre-lymph. So we'll walk through that and then some of it returns and gets recirculated back to the heart. So it's delivering, I mean, how we're wired is this, you know, pre-lymph, this interstitial fluid is delivering oxygen and nutrients, you know, um, you know, to this space. So, you know, again, um, we need to have really good circulation to have good lymphatic support. And then, you know, what happens is it's, um, you know, a network, right? So, you know, we have, um, and this is just one visual, I'll show you more, that, you know, when this um, fluid leaves the capillary space, we're now in the extracellular matrix and the interstitial fluid, and we have these lymphatic capillaries, they're waiting to drain the extracellular space, and they kind of are this, like, dynamic network that are made up of, like, capillaries and um, you know we make it our way to the nodes and lymph organs and find our way back to the, the you know heart and there's two big jobs in my brain about the lymphatic system there's probably many more um, but it helps to detox and drain you know the body and it's also a huge part of our immune system and our immune surveillance um, because we're whatever's getting picked up is you know being shown to our immune system in the lymphatic nodes and you know the the um, part of our you know the spleen is part of the lymph you know we're we're getting that immune recognition so we can say hey that doesn't belong we need to you know actually have a healthy immune response so the lymphatic system again is really critical with our patients because just right we all what we do all day long is talk about toxicants and infection you know all the things so you know the lymph is like really a focal point because that's a really great place to do both right yes and you guys always ask me i'm sure you asked dr christine too why do i have this swollen lymph node it's been like this for you know days or weeks or months and it's your mm -hmm. it's a place where your body goes to make an army if it sees a foreign intruder um yeah. so they can swell up because your body's trying to, it's always trying to heal you and protect you yeah so it sees something is, is what i tell you guys and it often means if it's been there for a while and large, you probably have some stagnant lymph somewhere because things aren't moving through. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, just use it. Your body's always talking to you, right? Um, and then these vessels have these one-way valves we'll talk about that kind of move that lymph back to the heart. So it's kind of this, you know, propulsion of this fluid back to the, the heart. So it's a big part of why we do the things we're going to talk about to get your lymph moving. And we'll have some more info in there. And then this is like a whole other you know, conversation, but just to share with you, like, hey, on the way back, you know, and, you know, there's, um, you know, lymph everywhere in the body and there are lymph, there are groups of lymph nodes and, um, you know, lymph nodes are everywhere, but we have groups of lymph nodes, you know, in our neck and our armpits and our abdomen we have a ton of lymph in our abdomen um in our bikini line groin area you know behind our knees you know so these are like where like a lot of groupings of lymph nodes are so if you have chronic swelling in the area your body is busy and again making that army that dr just said um and we're making you know appropriate b cell and t cell um reactions and communication you know in the body to kind of filter and mount a response to bacteria parasites viruses fungi toxicants spike protein whatever you know so um you know we we gotta love our lymph nodes and then we just you know just so everybody understands we not only have lymph 
um, vessels and capillaries and nodes, but we have organs, right? So we have the bone marrow is a lymphatic organ. You know, that's where all of our white blood cells and red blood cells are really made, you know, so that's why our bones are really important. Um, our thymus gland, I've used a lot of thymus peptides in my practice and um, the thymus shrinks as we, you know, age, but it's also really important to um, mount an appropriate immune response. Um, and then, you know, the other parts of the lymph system, the second area organs, we call them, are the nodes, the tonsils. We could do a whole talk on the tonsils, and I do talk about it more in this talk, but the tonsils are really important in what we would call in bioregulatory medicine is the tonsils are an interference field um, that are, you know, in our chronically ill patients, and they have such an important job draining the brain and communicating to the gut. Um, and so what happens is if you have a lot of congestion in that ring of lymphatic tissue, you can be quite ill. And well, we have a whole slide on that, but I mean, we, we know and Dr. Jess embraced neurotherapy and is injecting people's tonsils now and, you know, all the fun things, right? You know, so, um, you know, so More, sadly, but yes, you guys, <laughs> it's amazing what Dr. Christine and Kelly Kennedy have showed me with this. Yeah. <laughs> I had problems. I'm just going to give them a real just a quick, quick story, Dr. Christine. I had strep throat so much when I was a kid that I probably should have had my tonsils removed. I mean, it was seven in a year. I'd get six infections in a year, right? Bordered on. And I still have mine, but these things, these suckers can sequester things. And I don't know how long, possibly years, because I was not sick. Yeah. And my tonsils injected. And on the third injection, they spewed pus at the person injecting them. The right one did. And I can't explain that, except there was something colonized there. Yeah, yeah, totally. And that's, you know, my, my I always ask my patients, did you have frequent strep throat? Did you have mono? Um, do you still have your tonsils? If you have the tonsil scars, we still inject them because that can still infect, affect the drainage. And then um, it's a ring of lymphatic tissue. You know, there's the palatine tonsils and the adenoids and the tubal tonsils and the lingual tonsils. And that whole ring is called Waldeyer's ring. I'll talk about it. And, you know, it's such an apart, uh, you know, important part of my our immune system. I have a almost five-year-old and I, she has big tonsils like her mom. And so I'm like having Kelly work on, you know, I'm trying not to give her a complex and talk about it, but I'm like, looking at like her tonsils and like how he's like, oh, you know, you know too much, right? You know, and so- yeah. We really want to help her drain her tonsils and, you know, support her so she has good health, you know, the rest of her life. Um, but the tonsils are important. Um, pyres, patches are the immune system and, and the um, intestines. We have the appendix as part of the um, lymphatic system, the spleen, which is like so important. You know, we know in mono people, their spleen will swell up, you know, when, when they have this chronic viral infection, the gut associated lymphatic tissue and the um, mucosal associated, it's really lymphoid tissue and lymphatic. Um, so the mucosas, um, of the body as well as the gut, you know, lining is a huge part of our immune system. Um, so homage to our bioregulatory uh, pioneers. So this is a hard book to read, but I want to give it as a reference. You know, So this is all about the extracellular matrix and Dr. Alfred Pischinger, an Austrian um, physician, he said, you know, almost every disease starts within the extracellular matrix and a cell cannot by um, be considered by itself without taking its environment into account. So this whole idea of, you know, the cell by itself is just like a concept. It's the um, cellular environment and that communication and whether the cell can function optimally or not is about the environment around it. And, you know, that's like a theme of life, right? You know, like, you know, we're not supposed to be in isolation, right? And, you know, what kind of environmental factors make us who we are, right? Um, um, and so this is like a, just again, a diagram to make our point. Um, so this is the capillary, you know, again, blood um, stays in the um, capillary, but much of the fluid leaves this space and encounters the extracellular matrix. And this is a thriving space and where we um, focus our treatments. So there's collagen, which is the most abundant protein in the body. We have hyaluronic acid, proteoglycans. We have um, fibroblasts. We have mast cells, all those mast cell activation people. That's you know why we have to clean up the space because there's too much going on in the space that the mast cells are reacting to. And then the lymphatic vessel, 
is there to kind of keep that fluid moving and then moving. And this is an interconnected system. So if there's stagnation or congestion in one area, um, it can start to build. And when there's a build up, like let's say there's lymph stagnation in the body, so this space doesn't drain anymore, then this starts to kind of build up with fluid. And then what happens is um, there is a sometimes an overwhelm of toxicants or pathogens that start interrupting with um, and normal metabolic waste. So they start degrading, you know, collagen um, metals because of their charge get hooked into all the, um, you know, proteoglycans, you know, the mast cells are going crazy and then the cells can't take out their garbage, you know, if you will. And then there's like a breakdown of cellular communication and then there's disease. And my good friend, Dr. Rob Cass, who owns a company called Physica, he says in his book, you should, he has a good book in his, in his, um, um, kind of like if you're a part of a, his um, a practitioner like account, you can buy one of his like books, which is all of his knowledge, and he has some really good pearls in there. And he says everything that comes out of the blood takes a somewhat complicated route through the connective tissues to the parenchymal cells, which are the cells, right, that I just said, said, and then into the lymphatics. The ECM regulates the cellular milieu environment. And since the lymphatics are highly intermeshed with the ECM, we can change the terrain by lymph therapies. We can change our epigenetic expression by draining the lymph. Oops, would be. Yes. Yeah. So, um, so that's why we care about the system and we just talk about it all day long. But yeah, Dr. May I provide an example to drive this home? Um, so about a year and a half ago, I had someone tell me that I was unable to have children due to my fallopian tubes. Mm -hmm. And then right after that, the med the California, let's leave Oregon out of that, that one just happened. The California Medical Board started coming after me for writing vaccine exemptions for fragile children. And at that time, my RIN channel, which is right here, the reproductive channel. Now I want you to look, it's right next to the thoracic ducts that drain the lymph right here. I started breaking out. And what I would describe a histamine reaction, it was almost eczema-like. And it would come and go, and it would turn, it would be like these, you know, like that cystic acne under the skin, that like itches and burns. It would be like that right on this channel in between my breasts on my sternum. And I even had some irritation under the armpits for a while. Now, I've connected all this. And what that was from, one of my friends, Alina Connor, is a postural restoration therapist. And she's the one that brought my awareness to the fact that I didn't know how to exhale. Now, what happens if you're inhaling all the time, you don't know how to exhale, you've got um, kind of superimposed um, a, a lungs that are up, right? They're super inflated, that's the word. Yep. And I don't know how to exhale, so I'm not releasing, because 70% of toxins are, de are detoxified through the lungs. So I'm holding on to all these toxins, all this trauma, and my body starts reacting because mast cells are going crazy. Yeah. Yeah. That's what happened to me. All from trauma, all from not breathing. Yeah. It changed my physical structure and I started having rashes. That's wild. Wild. From what Dr. Christine is describing the science here to you. That's what happened to me. Yeah. And I have a slide too, Jess, about how the lymph, you know, if we're not, you know, inhaling and exhaling, that rib cage is not pumping the lymph like we need to so um so yeah thank you for sharing that sure. um, and just another kind of you know picture i'll speed up a little bit because i could talk forever about this but this is um you know what i wanted to land on is these proteoglycans um so these are these feathery like projections in this water that really have a lot of you know they they do a lot they help to hydrate the space they help to move fluid um, in the space they also are part of the communication network and store electrons in the space um i'll um share that in a moment um so this is hyaluronic acid and then we have a proteoglycan kind of um little feathery like projection one is called chondroitin sulfate i use a lot of chondroitin sulfate in my products to basically allow them to penetrate into the lymph more and I love Dr. James Oshman made grounding make sense to me because what he said was, OK, here we have this like chondroitin sulfate proteoglycan and their feathers are electric electron, their charges, electrons. Right. And it's a field of negative charge. Right. So it's having this kind of field of a negative charge. And because it's in that really rich environment of all that action, 
part of our inflammatory or anti-inflammatory preparedness is having enough electrons to quench free radicals, right? So if we're not, you know, full of electrons and negative charge in that space, we can also have a lot of inflammation in that space. So his idea is like grounding is you're getting electrons, they're being stored in your proteoglycans so you can have inflammatory preparedness in your extracellular matrix. So I always thought that was fun to look at. Yeah, is that fun? I didn't have, I don't have my grounding slide here, but you got to get the book, um, just the energy medicine book by Dr. James Oshman. Just get it on your Kindle and like just, you'll read chapters of it. It just explains everything in a way that you're like, um, I know he's, he's, he talks about fascial memory, trauma energetics. He talks about all sorts of wild things. Um, and this can I just say one thing? Oh, yeah. Why it's important to have negative charge, you guys, a lot of heavy metals are positive. A lot of toxins are positive, right? And so like, for example, lead can get in there and sub certain other type of trace minerals that you're supposed to have. Aluminum can get in there with its two plus charging to kind of mimic other trace minerals and vitamins that are supposed to be there and fool the body. So these toxic heavy metals can kind of stick into our receptors and pull the body because they look like it's almost like an endocrine disruptor it looks like estrogen same thing with heavy metals so how are you going to pull that out you gotta have a charge yeah 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 totally love right. it oh no please i love i love this um, so then just real quick james oshman the living matrix this is this idea how we're interconnected from the skin to the nucleus of the cell and how we have these basically from the collagen proteoglycan matrix there are these um, connections that jump over the cell membrane through what we call integrins and then hook into the cytoskeleton of the um, cell which is full of microtubules and things and then that you know cytoskeleton is all connected um, you know through the nuclear membrane to the DNA and then this the system when you just kind of look at this kind of fabric um, it generates and transmits vibrations in the form of mechanical waves electrical signals magnetic and electromagnetic fields heat and light so we have this this is the this is the fabric with an energy medicine at the end of the day um, so this is pretty fun and then again I won't belabor this but um, you know okay here is kind of like the living matrix and the living matrix side by side and then my kind of idea around this is that we, I call it, I've been calling it now the quantum terrain, you know, up leveling kind of this idea of the living matrix, because we don't stop at the skin, right? We have a field of information and energy around us. Um, we know this is called the biofield, thanks to Eileen McCusick. This is her picture, um, and she's showing this beautiful toroidal field of plasma that surrounds us, and it can store our memory and our information. Our memory is in this holographic fractal, you know, plasma rich field in the body. And when you have trauma or, you know, um, dissonant information in the field, that can affect, you know, downstream all the way to our living matrix within ourselves. So just kind of opening your mind if you haven't heard this, that we could talk about this all day. You know, we do have a bio, the bio field. I have a good friend, Dr. Beverly Rubick. She's in, um, like she's at the um, UC Berkeley um, as a biophysicist and her life's work is around the bio field. Um, and then, you know, again, just a couple of points and then we'll get back to it. Um, you know, we are swimming in this unified field or this ether, or this um, space that's not an empty vacuum. It's actually a highly rich um, space full of potential and energy. So here we are, right? Um, you know, we have this fascial fabric. We're sitting in these bio fields within the unified field. And these could be whole conversations of why this matters and how, but I'm just trying to open up the communication that we have a through line of communication from our DNA to the ether. Um, and, you know, the more that we hone in on that, the more, you know, practices like meditation and connecting, you know, to these concepts, really we can tap into an unlimited healing well, right? And then we can use that information um, for a biological upgrade um, for our physical bodies. And that's the work of Dr. Dispenza. Yeah, and if you guys need more evidence, some people need to see it. Go check out uh, Veda Austin. Oh and yeah, doing yeah. with water is mind blowing. Like I literally cannot believe it when I see the pictures. 
Oh it's, no, it's wild. I mean, every, time, every time I'm like, what? like mind blowing. She literally speaks to the water and freezes it, and it shows her her answers. I know. It's wild. Yeah, she, um, I, you introduced me to her and I interviewed her for my Body Electric relaunch and I just let her talk. Like she just talked like nonstop and I was just like this, I cannot believe like she's not even more famous than she is right now. It's like so wild, but people aren't ready yet, but people are almost ready to hear it. Yeah, yeah. No. Um, so again, just, you know, I want to remind people when we start moving, you know, lymph and stagnant lymph, you know, we just want to make sure that what Dr. Jess educates us all about, you know, when we get the lymph finally wakes and makes its way, you know, um, to the liver and the liver needs to process it and, you know, bile is a route of elimination. Um, we need to make sure that we have good binders because what I hear sometimes is when people have really stagnant lymph, they get flu-like and icky when we start, you know, moving it. And I don't want that to be a deterrent deterrent for you to move your lymph. I want it to be like uh, an awakening that you need this more than ever. And one way to kind of ease that is through the work with binders. And, you know, we all have our favorite binders. We use a lot of cell core binders and biopure binders and, you know, pectisol and enteros gel and, um, you know, all the things, but do you have any favorite binders that you want to talk about in this moment? You know, I think the ones that I, if you're really sensitive to guys and you're like, oh, cell core binders, they may be great, but I get migraines and I feel worse than that because I hear that too sometimes. I really love chlorella and spirulina. I really, I really do. They're gentle enough for children and most people don't have those reactions out of the gate with them most of the time. Yeah. Chlorella, the only thing um, with any binder really is you just want to make sure you're not constipated. And, you know, I think the whole point around that is just use the magnesium, use whatever to keep your bowels moving while you're binding, you know, um, okay. there's some work with that. But yeah, great point. I, I've used a ton of chlorella in my day. Um, I just kind of felt like sharing a little bit about Bioflow, one of the solutions in my products that I meant, um, made is all about the gallbladder. And I created a product line all about the lymph and people are like, why are you talking about the gallbladder with the lymph? And, you know, this is kind of my, you know, um, you know, reminder of why. And, you know, Dr. Jess has done a ton of um, education around this. So, um, you know, how bile flow is necessary for lymph flow and the bile does so much for our environment and our intestines. Um, you know, for not only digesting fats, but also um, it's an elimination pathway for, you know, hormones and metabolic waste and, you know, metals and mycotoxins and all the things. And it also is important for our thyroid hormone or blood sugar. Um, and then if you have, you know, endotoxins and inflammation and excess estrogen and or if you're pregnant, um, that can make your gallbladder sluggish. So that's even more that we need to not only um, help with that, but also get the bile moving. Um, and then, you know, if bile builds up in the cells, it will spit it back into the blood and then you get really itchy and then the kidneys have to deal with it. Um, and so that's really a excitement reaction at the end of the day. So that's why we need to, you know, keep that bile moving. I didn't know if I had, I sometimes put the slides about Dr. Chris Shade has about phase 2.5, Kelly Holderman's work too, about how the the bile will be like, you know, okay, I can't go this way. I'm going to go to back into the blood to, you know, get the kidneys to deal with it. So now we're gonna just talk about some things that you can do at home to move this beautiful system we talked about. So movement, rebounding, vibration plates, um, dry skin brushing, structured water, um, water itself that structured will move. Um, and so that will kind of propel the fluid. A flow presso, um, Kelly Kennedy and Desiree Desponge gave us that. A manual lymphatic drainage, gua sha. Um, we now have our flow vibe, right? Are you sharing this with your community yet? But I have, this is the great reveal. I have not done it yet. I'm so excited for these people on here. And I'm gonna, I am gonna make this a public recording, I think for people to share this because I want everyone to see this thing. Look at what she's got, you guys. I know this is we we all had to laugh because it's a vibrator for your lymph but <laughs> once you get past that my patients love it I, I the people in um you know when I have them on the treatment table it just kind of before we do neural therapy so Desiree made it like this so it fits right here and everybody has stick stuck lymph right here you know this is a this is the vagus nerve right this it hurt is, you guys rub right there I hurt 
Yeah, so you need this. This is the, um, you know, the vagus nerve, the cervical lymph nodes, the tonsils. You can get the tonsils draining. And then, you know, the whole thing vibrates. So you can also put it on your, you know, thoracic duct, your lymphat your right lymphatic duct. You can put the whole thing in your armpit, you know, get the armpit draining. The cisterna Kylie, you know, so we love this. And I know Dr. Jess will share this with the community, but um, this is pretty fun. And it's like almost like you have like a lymph... Um, you know, manual lymph therapist at your home because this works so well, right? Um, yeah. and it, it's really a great tool because some of my patients like they're unsteady, they can't get on the vibration plate, you know, so it's a really good, you know, tool. And then I just made this note, make sure your blood is moving because if your blood is not moving, your lymph isn't moving. So this is, I test everyone's D-dimer, fibrinogen, HSCRP since COVID. Um, and then we could talk all day about the endothelial glycocalyx, but that's the plasma gel-like kind of, it's like the fascia in the blood vessel. Um, and it's a big part of keeping the blood moving. Um, our friend, Dr. Jerry Pollock, you know, go check him out. He it was brilliant. I don't even think he knows how brilliant he is of how he kind of got this idea and understanding into our um, brains for biology. So it's this H302, this easy water, structured water, um, holds negative charge. It's a battery-like effect. It increases flow. Um, if you go out in the sun, the UV and the infrared spectrum makes exclusion zone water within you. That's why the sauna is good. That's why our infrared lights are good. Um, and then toxicants, you know, if we have too much of them, you know, they can disrupt our easy water. And then what I learned about this, um, you know, you think like health is exclusion zone water, right? The more that we, you know, ingest um, through foods and through structured water um, and our and light, you know, we have, you know, health, right? And, you know, we have more energy, we have more ne negative charge, we have more flow in our body. Um, we already really talked about this, but, you know, you'll have the slides and the recording and everything so you can digest this even more, but this, you know, we can inhale and exhale and how that inhalation and exhalation moves that, you know, thoracic cage that helps to pump the lymph. And remember that um, thoracic duct and the right lymphatic duct are right there. So that pumping of your thoracic cage actually helps to move lymph. So when in doubt, breathe. <laughs> and then and then there are many things that are uh, we're up against right you know so you have to have a you know language and a you know conversation about what we're why we're so stagnant in our limb system right so again dr jess educates about all of this all day long so i won't belabor it but like from heavy metals microplastics spike protein different pathogens and then trauma right so um if you're stuck and you're doing all the things have you looked at your trauma right because trauma can be stored in the fascia. Um, you know, any um, therapist that works on the body knows when they do um, deep work on, you know, laying of hands on people that they move trauma out of the body. You know, this is somatic work. This is craniosacral, visceral manipulation, Reiki, any hands-on healing where we're holding space for the fascia to unwind and release that trauma. Neural therapy does this all day long. So trauma gets stored in many places, you know, I think in the limbic brain, the vagus nerve, the biofield, and in the, in the fascia and the water. So really moving energy is to allow that to be released and not hold us back and create resistance within us. Um, and Dr. Ashman does a lot of education about why. So we're gonna talk about the brain. We have like 10 minutes to talk about the brain, but we got this, right? <laughs> uh -huh. Here we go. So the glymphatic system, you know, um, when I started speaking a lot, I just love talking about the speaking, uh, the speaking about the glymphatic system, because again, a newly discovered organ, and I was so surprised that not everybody would be screaming about it because it's like, if you have any brain issues, you know, the answers lie in getting your glymphatic system to drain. So it's just the lymph in the brain. When Dr. Jess and I went to medical school, I think we still thought the, there was no immune system in the brain, right? There was a, you know, it was just this sterile organ, you know, with behind the Great Wall of China blood brain barrier, right? And no, it's, uh, it has a microbiome, you know, <laughs> the brain has lymph, it has a microbiome, you know, all of that's wrong. So 
These are the uh, glymphaticus glial dependent lymphatic system. A glial cell called the astrocyte is this starlight um, you know, cell that has these end feet and these aquaporin channels that regulate the flow of lymph and cerebral spinal fluid to bathe the neuron. It removes normal metabolic waste, amyloid beta. Um, it removes toxicants, viruses, all the things that get into the brain. And it goes out through the venous system. And if you've had a traumatic brain injury or any concussion, your lymphatic system starts to look like this and your astrocytes are actually damaged. And you can then get a buildup of that, you know, metabolic waste, that toxicity, that amyloid beta, and you get cellular death lack of cellular you know communication and then cognitive impairment right that can be healed but you just need to know about it right and then if your neck lymph isn't draining well then that's going to create pooling of lymph in your brain because it's kind of like anywhere there's stagnation um that's going to affect, you know, lymph stagnation and other tissues. Um, so my good friend, Dr. Marco Ruggiero, who helped me create my products, he actually studied um, the brains of children with autism and, you know, with Dr. Bradstreet in the early days and found that they had a buildup of glymphatic fluid in their brain and they did ultrasound on their cervical lymph nodes to drain them. And then the lymph in the brain got released. So, you know, again, if you have Lyme or Bartonella or chronic Epstein-Barr, you're going to have cervical lymph nodes that are often congestion, and that is, a, you know, stagnation for the glymphatic system. We also know that the glymphatic system drains through the olfactory bulb and the um, cribriform plate um, and through the wall dyer's ring of tonsillar tissue we talked about. So the sinuses and the tonsils are so important for glymphatic drainage too. Again, we could do a whole talk about that. What do you inject, Dr. Kristen? Yeah, the tonsils and the sinus. Um, you know. What are you, what are you putting in there? Oh, in um, in the tonsils and the sinus. So we'll um, we'll do you know of course procaine. Um, sometimes we combine it with homeopathic. Sometimes we add light. I use a lot of ozone in the office, so I'll even just have people do nasal ozone um, and not inject it. You can inject the tonsils with ozone. Um, you know sometimes that's a little too much for people, so I don't always do that. Um, there's intranasal light therapy too that can be helpful. And then I'm like, every one of my patients is on some type of sinus irrigation type of thing, as well as some type of, um, you know, tonsil, either gargle or spray. And then we have solutions, you know, I created my limb flow cream with Marco just to drain, you know, the neck, um, you know, so, so the brain can drain. And then there's all these wonderful anecdotes. Um, so okay. yeah, yeah, and then we got a lot of lymph in our gut. Um, again, you can read this later. Um, we have lymph within our intestines, and then I want to say this point. This I, I learned this in my past life that you know we have lymph behind our intestines as well. So it's called radix edema, and you know I've seen over the years when lymphatic therapists move the lymph behind the intestines, the whole body starts to drain. So you can have inflammation within the gut and behind the gut. So that is you know again um, you know very impactful for the rest of the body. It's kind of like if the lymph is stagnant in the gut, the the extremities and the head don't drain as well. So move your lymph in your gut. I already talked about this, you know, the right lymphatic duct drains the right head and the right arm and the right, you know, breast and upper chest and then the left side does the rest. Um and then we created Lymph Flow. Um, this is a beautiful blend, you know, of microbial chondroitin sulfate. We talked about chondroitin sulfate. It's vegan for the people who care about animals and products and all of that. Um, and then it's a probiotic blend. This is the secret sauce that these probiotics actually make GC math, which is macrophage activating factor. So we're getting not only the movement and the flow, but we're delivering an antiviral and an immune support so it's actually twofold it's creating movement and immune support we have you could go on our website i mean i've been working with this product for a long time it's just really fun because we just we have it to drain the lymph but people put it all over their body and we have all sorts of wonderful things we're going to have a um 
special code for all of Dr. Jess's community that we'll share in the chat and all of that. So if you're interested in trying my products, we're giving everyone 20% off um, for a few days. So just FYI. Um, and, you know, again, we have people put it on their neck at bedtime to help their lymphatic drainage. But again, you can have fun and put it on all sorts of other areas. And then scars are so is some of our favorites. I mean, isn't it fun to inject scars, Dr. Jess, after? Oh, my favorite. It's so fun, right? So yeah. it's, you know, if you're not getting better, just look at your body and see if you have any scars. Scars can be physical trauma to the fascia, the lymphatics, the acupuncture meridian system, and you know the autonomic nervous system, and they can hold emotional trauma. So I don't know if you've injected a scar yet and seen a really physical, really um, emotional release in the body, um, but you know trauma um, in this tissue can really be part of the reason why it's stagnant, right? And why that the there's so much resistance in that tissue space. Um, and I just kind of dropped a line from Dr. Peter Levine that trauma is perhaps the most avoided, ignored, belittled, denied, misunderstood, and untreated cause of human suffering. You know, so I think there's so much education around that now. But um, so we have people put, you know, if you can't get to the neural therapist right away, put lymph flow on your scars. Um, you can start putting the vibration on the, you know, scar as well, because that, you know, we want to mitigate that stagnation. And the more that we can do to create fluidity and flow in that area, the healthier you're going to be and the more your lymph is going to move. And then, you know, this picture changed my brain about the scars. So this is underneath, right? So scars are a plug in the fascia. They, they're just, the job is to like heal the body, make sure that, you know, there's um, a healed injury, but it's not the same fascia as our original fascia. It's more dense, irregular, and there could be adhesions. So, you know, a lot of times when I do my neural therapy now, I also am like doing a lot of this to get, you know, the um, this tissue underneath to move. Um, and, you know, if you want to study also the impacts of scars, I had a mentor, Dr. Louisa Williams. She wrote a book called Radical Medicine. It's a Bible for bioregulatory medicine. She did a wonderful job. And she just talks about, she calls, I love this, scars are an island of turbulence and trap toxicants, pathogens, and emotions in, you know, in this in this space. Um, and they can have all these reflexes. I mean, I'll inject a scar in the back and people's heart palpitations go away and all sorts of wild things. So scars are pretty awesome to acknowledge and to heal. So real quick, as we wrap up, you know, I talk a lot about the glymphatic system over the years, and I talked a lot about melatonin and getting people to sleep and, you know, just put some, you know, flow cream on your neck, lymph flow, you know, put some melatonin in your, you know, body, your glymphatic system will be working. And while that worked a lot, and for all the reasons, you know, the deeper we get into the phases of sleep, the more we understand how we optimize, not only just get to bed, but making sure you're getting into enough REM and deep sleep. And a lot of the healing that happens is in deep and REM sleep in the day. And now everyone checks their sleep with an aura ring. So we get all this information, about, you know, sleep. And so um, it's really, really impactful. Um, and so the glymphatic system is actually more active during deep, both deep and REM sleep. And so, um, you know, again, you guys can read this, um, but REM sleep is also associated with this brain-wide increase in cerebral volume, increasing the CSF influx and glymphatic system activity. So when we're dreaming, our glymphatic system is moving. Um, and, you know, again, REM is this wild toad. Like, I mean, people who study sleep, you know, it's wild. Um, REM is like, our body is paralyzed, but we're metabolically really active. So, you know, a lot, like our heart is, um, rate is going up, our blood pressure is going up, our blood is going up. And this is, again, why, you know, people who have insomnia and might have this really light sleep but are not getting into deep sleep or REM sleep are really, you know, not well. And there's a lot of reasons why, you know, um, sleeping pills don't allow you to get into these, you know, states of sleep, you know, alcohol, you know, all these things you, we all know, like if, you know, you have a couple of drinks, you don't sleep as well. You know, if you, you know, are taking um, sleeping pills, they knock you unconscious, but they're not healing your brain while you sleep. So while they can be a short term tool when you're in crisis, um, it's not a long term tool. 
And so Marco and I created a sleep cream because in order to heal the lymphatic system, we have the sleep cream. So this is a type of GABA with chondroitin sulfate that when you apply it on your temples and behind your ears or wherever you want to apply it, it actually crosses the blood brain barrier. So a lot of our GABAs, you know, if they get ingested, it's questionable. You know, there's all sorts of conversations around this. But people, you know, um, we see all sorts of um, wonderful testimonials. And then, um, you know, we see like, I mean, this is normal for us to see deep and REM sleep. You know, nothing works for everybody 100%, but when it works, it really works. So a really great brain detoxification program is using somnium, lymph flow, you can throw in some melatonin in a binder as well, <laughs> you know, treat your scars, all of it. Um, but that, you know, that can be really helpful. So that's just a video of, you know, making sure we're, you know, draining, um, you know, well, this is the somnium application. And then you can see kind of the lymphatics in the head. And then so you know my Jason and my father both you both use somnium from oh. their and i've used lip flow and i'm out and i need it because we'll send you yeah we'll send you some. the best yeah. i promise that's why i did this what i heard it's the best seriously Thank you, thank you. And I think I've connected you with Jennifer Payer. Um, you guys have to connect. Um, I know you're both in North Carolina. Um, so part of bioregulatory medicine is this beautiful type of plant medicine called gemotherapy. And gemotherapy uses the fresh buds of the plants. And it is this beautiful medicine that takes this fresh embryonic energy that's full of regenerative information um, and a glycerin alcohol master it, and then they do spagyric so you get all the minerals in the plant to drain the extracellular matrix, move the lymph. And before I met Jennifer, I always dreamt up because I love this medicine and it had a big impact in my body when I was young that we should make it liposomal to get into the lymph more better. And so Jennifer and I partnered to create these liposomal gemos and we created one for the spleen, the gallbladder and the global lymph. And it's been a lot of fun. People have been really loving them. So we have um, this combination with lymph, the lymph gemo. Um, and then we have um, a gallbladder gemo. So we're really thinking about not only moving bile, but helping like with the sclerosis and also the viruses and the pathogens that get in the bile duct. Um, also with the spleen, we're helping with not only um, the filtration, um, but we also added um, hedge maple, which is a really awesome antiviral gemo. Um, and, you, and then Kelly told me, of course, our friend Kelly Kennedy was like, you can put them on topically, you know, too. So she schooled me like I'm talking all about the skin to the nucleus and she's like, you can put them on topically, too. So she's been putting the, the spleen gemo on people's, um, you know, spleen. And then um, this is my newest product, Lymphimmune, and Lymphimmune is all about um, zinc, copper and quercetin with these hemp seed proteins. And these hemp seed proteins at the end of the day make GC math in your body. So just another way to get GC map. So I didn't want to, I do a lot of drainage of the um, lymphatic system. I didn't want to forget about the immune part of the um, system. So these are the products. Well, we can drop it in um, wherever. So Dr. Jess gets a code um, and we'll give the code. So we make sure, um, you know, you get the 20% to your people. And then I think that's a wrap. Oh, those are my people at my clinic. Oh, <laughs> yeah. So, I told you guys, she's a genius. I told you. So, 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 um, do you have a couple of minutes for questions? Yeah, yeah. Okay, because we have a lot, and so I think you provided information no one else can get anywhere else. I think we answered this one. If lymph is within the fascia, does fascia blasting work lymphatic drainage? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so you have to be careful with fascia blasting, just that you're doing it you know, um, with all the support, you know, but you're getting that, that scar tissue, that adhesions, you're moving lymph with the, fi you know, the fascia blasting, yes. You can see you guys know fascia blasting and Ashley Black has taken a lot of slack, I think, lately, and it's because she didn't really understand drainage yeah. and Alzheimer's symptoms, and that's what all the bad press is about. These people are kicking dust up at the construction site, kicking up all that stuff we just talked about in the lymph, and then not having binders, they're recirculating them, they're not pooping, all that stuff, right? Yeah, totally. And yeah. I just something, um, it's Dr. Just 20. I'm just gonna put it, don't stop. Um, yeah. it up. And so for all your people, there we go, perfect. Okay. 
And you guys, this will also be on Wellness Plus and her products are on Wellness Plus too um, with that discount as well. And I, I'm gonna try and email this um, to all you guys who signed up as well. So Kate wants to know, my question, I have big lumps behind the back of my knees. Mm -hmm. um, I've read that this is a big area for lip. How do you break this up and get these lumps and bumps moving? Kate, I feel you. Yeah, totally. So just like, okay, do that whole checklist, right? Do you have any dental issues? Do you have any scars? Are you working with any um, toxicity or chronic infections? You know, obviously the trauma piece is also always big. Um, this little thing you can put behind your knee and <laughs> you know, help to break up that lymph. Um, some people put on, um, you know, the flow cream behind there, but you wanna understand what's congesting your lymph and then, um, you know, really have a targeted approach. Um, do you have any, I mean, have you have any injuries in your knees or scars? Cause that can also create, um, you know, adhesions or not, you know, the, not the flow. And then think upstream, right? Is there anything going on in the pelvic bowl or in the abdomen, you know, for that's impeding your legs draining? And remember, I wasn't breathing, so my thoracic ducts up here were closed. Make sure these are uh, make sure these are open with the flow vibe, with the flow cream, tapping, all that stuff. Open this up first, which where everything drains, and that will help the knees too, right? Yep, absolutely. Um, I'm a holistic veterinarian. I was wondering what you inject into the tonsils. I think we all answered that one. Are there references where I, I, you can direct me to learn? Thank you. Yeah, there are some um, textbooks on neural therapy. There's one by Dr. Robert Kidd. I forget what he calls it. Um, and then there are trainings, you know, um, around, you know, for neural therapy. There are few and far between, but um, there are. Um, we use Procaine. We get a 1% preservative free um, and make sure that, um, you know, it's all those things because procaine is very safe and well tolerated as long as it's like, you know, compounded. Um, and then it's it's a half life of about 30 minutes. So people tolerate it really well. Nice. OK, Kate, I love this question. What are the top where to start with healing your limb? Top two to three suggestions. I guess you gave a lot of that here. Um, I'll give my top three and I'll let Dr. Christine yeah. I would say stay hydrated with good, clean, structured, filtered water. I would say move your body every single day. And I speak from experience is that if you like to stuff trauma like I do, please address your love. Yeah, I love it. Yeah. Right manipulation. Yeah, totally. Breathe, you know, move um, and yeah, drink water and then just kind of be curious, you know, what, you know, what your body is trying to communicate with you and what could be some of these underlying causes that are unaddressed still. So why, why are some of these organs the first thing doctors remove? That's a good question. I would also like the answer to. It's literally that they don't understand how the human body works, you guys. They've been brainwashed. Yeah, yeah, I know. It's like, um, and often we don't think about the lymph in conventional medicine until someone has lymphedema from a surgery where their breast is removed and their lymph nodes are torn out and then their arms are swelling. And then that's when we care about the lymph. But, you know, the lymph is, again, really, really, um overlooked and you can be th like thin and have tons of lymph congestion um you know too so that's also misunderstood but yeah with the you know conventional people you know they're just not treating root cause they're just trying to palliate and um you know not look deeper than that often i absolutely agree they just are too busy you guys um what when you're having a lymphatic massage session should you take a binder before or after the session a lot of our patients do that because that that we just you know people learn the hard way because they have like they know this is good for them but they just have some symptoms so yeah absolutely that's a great point you you get you get it you know <laughs> you, if you're asking that question you already get it um what is a vibration plate i recently just got one you guys even if you feel like crap and you can't even hardly stand up you could stand on a vibration plate and you could a blow vibe to that Dr. Christine had. You can do that no matter how you feel. Yeah, and you can even sit on one, put a limb on one, you know, you can, yeah, get creative, but it changes your energy, doesn't it, pretty fast? Yeah. I mean, it's like, duh, 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 like you're, yeah, if, if you're in a bad mood, it shakes it right out of you. <laughs> um, are your products good for mold toxicity, Dr. Christine? Yeah, I mean, a lot of my patients have mold toxicity and mold, right, stagnates the biome. 
stagnates the lymph and you know a lot of people have neuroinflammation you know when they're going through a mold crisis and so getting people to sleep and getting their lymphatic system to drain and their bile to flow on their lymph movement yeah and also latent infections flare right you know when you're um immunosuppressed by mycotoxins so yeah lots of mono lots of epstein bar lots of yeast i see with mold um i have a lovely holistic vet says thanks awesome talk I can get propane and I have some ozone and I can use homeopathics as well. Maybe lymphomyosot. Sounds like she knows what she's doing. Um, I usually just treat um, scars with laser. Oh, you know, you should know. I hope that you know Dr. Marlene Siegel. Marlene Siegel is like a dear friend and she literally is doing what we do to humans, to animals with incredible results. So yes. um, just call her. She'll answer the phone. Yeah. <laughs> you know, she's amazing. I only have a Four more minutes left on this, so I'm trying to get it through here. But this is a good question. Someone says, "Could you use a Theragun on low setting instead of the the vibe flow, or the flow vibe?" But you know, I I like the difference is probably I think the flow vibe is a little more gentle. Yeah, it's using like sound waves at the end of the day. The Theragun is probably a little bit more pulsed, you know. But um, you know, any yeah, as long as you're tolerating it, I think um, at Eco, right, Dr. J. Davison was showing that like that tuning forks could be helpful, you know, as well. You know, um, we're just sharing some tools that we love and know. But yeah, there's so many out there. Yes, absolutely. That's yeah, a great way to kind of differentiate. Um, what should you do to address the limp after tooth filled tooth removal? Mm-hmm. How many auto, I have many autoimmune symptoms from the infected teeth, unfortunately. Yeah, well, great job getting it out, right? You know, that's huge. I have a lot of people do lymph work and craniosacral mm-hmm. after they get their uh, tooth removed. And then this is the time not to slow down, but to be um almost i don't like the word aggressive but i'm going to say it with your protocol around um you know binding and you know treating those latent infections you know you t- you put those root canals um to those labs that look at the um infectious components of those teeth and they're full of bacteria and lime and you know the herpes viruses and even amoebas and yeast and you just want to really support your body you know you need to recover from the surgery and manage your pain but you know really work with a practitioner that knows how to um really help as your body's recalibrating um to you know treat all the things and also breath work you guys huge deal it'd be huge deal after something like that too breath work craniosacral breath work is like and flow cream, such a good combination for that. Um, yeah, the limb flow after surgery all the time. Yeah. Yes. My son had a T fistula repair at birth. The six inch scar is below the right shoulder blade. Could that cause large tonsil stones? No other tonsillar issues. You know, that's interesting. There, there is a connection. I see it kind of the other way when people have a lot of tonsil issues that can drain and the end dental that can drain into the the shoulder um, and then that can actually create a lot of chronic shoulder issues. So I see the opposite, but I don't see why not. Like, you know, just thinking about, you know, a scar here that can block lymph and create stagnation upstream. So, you know, use the uh, lymph flow, use the vibration, maybe when he's at a point where he feels comfortable, inject the inject the scar. Absolutely. Can scarring from a laparoscopic appendectomy cause lower body edema and swelling? Well, I'll tell you guys, I had a stupid, had liposuction on my legs in my 20s and it caused micro scars in my legs. So that definitely prevents me from drinking. Yeah, yeah, The um, we do like the laparoscopic scars. They're like, oh, they're small, like no big deal. But no, they actually, um, usually the, um, you know, that is a huge deal. And so I would um, tend to those scars and that will help, yeah. Absolutely. So Sandra, I'll have to tell you, I know who you are and how to find you. So I'll tell you what vibration plate I have. I can't remember the name of it right now. It was recommended to me, but it's downstairs and I'll message you and tell you. Yeah. Awesome. Um, What kind of vibrator work on lymph nodes or just the specialized lymph that was shown? Hmm. I'm not sure I understand that. Would any kind of vibrator work on the lymph nodes or just the specialized lymph one that was shown? Um, no, any vibration works, you guys, tapping even works. Yeah. Lodging works, rubbing works, right? All this works. So I don't want you guys to think you have to have that. This is just a nice way to be gentle to your body. It feels good and helps with the type of vibration. It's always a tool for you wherever you're at. 
Yeah. You know, it's up to you guys. So don't get overwhelmed. Don't let yourself, you're doing great. All of you guys are asking all the right questions, seriously. Um, and then I live in Saskatchewan and I have yet to find a practitioner who injects. Can acupuncture also be helpful? Yeah, acupuncture, there is a technique in acupuncture to thread the scars. Um, so talk to your acupuncturist, cupping the scars could also help as well. And then I think this is the last question I see, unless anyone else has any, it is, can you stimulate lymph, like dry body brushing? If you're pregnant um, and you have he heavy metals, they actually say in your blood. I don't see heavy metals in the blood a lot, usually in lymphatic system, but I'm, if you came up positive on like urine or hair screen, um, you just know you have heavy metals in your body. Um, yeah. If you're pregnant, um, it's, it is safe. I mean, talk to your doctor to take chlorella. Um, so I would do that. You can use the lymph flow cream and, you know, you can get massage and use vibration. I, I don't think that's a issue, but I would use like a pregnancy safe binder, um, which chlorella is. Mm. Absolutely. And then, okay, a couple more here. What are varicose veins a sign of sticky blood? That's a really good question. Yeah, it's lymph stagnation and also, you know, because um, think about, you know, how I showed you the difference between the arteries and the veins and then the lymph is in between. And so if there's stagnation, you know, or pulling in the in between that can affect also um, the venous return. So, um, you know, it can go both ways. But yes, like um, we think about varicose veins is like lack of integrity in the, the, the venous wall. So strengthening that with like um, things like blueberries and, you know, the pro, um, you know, the antioxidants there. Um, and then horse chestnut, there's horse chestnut cream. It can be helpful. Um, and then, yeah, it, it, like you just want to make sure lymphatic flow is optimized and, you know, check your labs if you can. D-dimer, take a look at that. And I just put Dr. Christine's um, website, ipothecarystore.com in the chat for you guys. That's where you use Dr. Jess 20 if you want to try any of the Gemma products or the Lip Flow creams, the Somnium cream. I can't, like my parents are on these, you guys. That's how much I love these products. I put my own family on them. Thank so, you. Thank you. Only the best for my parents, you know? So yeah, so that's how much I think of Dr. Christine. I think the world of her, you guys, I want to work with her as a practitioner to practitioner. So. I don't give you guys anything that I don't recommend for myself. Um, last couple of questions, Christy, I know you're busy and you need to go. Um, name the book you mentioned from your mentor, please. Um, the Radical Medicine, yeah, Radical Medicine. When I found that book, I was in school when it first came out, I like literally lugged that book around me and I was just like, I wanna know everything in this book. And now it's on Kindle, so you don't have to, <laughs> you know, like. You better read it, for sure, it's raving reviews. Talk about that. Yeah. Dr. Louisa, she's a Texan. She's still, she's in Austin. Yeah. And she, um, yeah, she's been a big teacher of mine. Yeah. She's brilliant. Is it safe to do lymph work when you have chronic hives due to living in toxic mold? Oh, good question. Good question. We we want to make sure your mast cells are stabilized. You know, you need a lot of probably mast cell stabilizers before doing anything aggressive. Because think about it, right? Your mast cells are going nut and crazy. And what's in your lymph is what's making them go crazy. So we got to address it. But if we can give you some more tools, um, I, it really changed my practice about four or five years ago. I interviewed Dr. Tanya Dempsey, and she was like, you have to treat the mast cells first and then you can clean up the body um, because we used to think, oh, just clean up the body and the mast cells will calm down, but you have to, whatever it takes, you know, um, and I will use um, catodifin or chromalin and drugs even if I need to, because the, um, you have to stabilize the mast cells to get um, the people better who are that, you know, flared. And it may be, you know, easier said than done clearly here, but getting out of the mold sometimes is enough to do that for some people and not enough for other people. They need a lot more support even after the mold. So really it's sometimes even mast cells are reacting to like your thoughts and nervous system that's in flight or fight. So oftentimes for me, it's a combination of like, you know, chromalin, the drugs, if you need to, you know, stinging nettles, DAO enzyme, vitamin C, quercetin, and then calming y'all down because you're like, Freaking out, fight or fight, that also helps to appropriately release things from the mast cells. Yeah, 
Absolutely. Get out of EMF to EMF. You know. Uh, I know that's hard. That's hard. But I'm just telling you, like, don't be sleeping by your Wi-Fi router if you have mast cell issues. You know what I mean? That kind of stuff. I mean, use at least common sense. It's that's a whole other question. You know. Amen. Amen. And then, um, how does HEDS impact lymph? Lymph. Excuse me. That's Ehlers Danlos. So that's uh, you know the hypermobility and a lot of the people who have hypermobility, right? They're um, more prone to the things that Dr. What Dr. Jess and I treat because of this vulnerability in the connective tissue and the collagen matrix to make them already more prone to all these stressors. So um, I I think you need more lymph treatment more than ever, right? But again, you know usually people with EDS, EDS need some you know collagen support. They need mass cell support, um, neck, you know, stabilization, you know, all of that. And then, you know, um, you know, feel confident, but lymph movement safe. I have a lot of EDS patients, lymph movement safe with the right support. Excellent. I think they even do like a sphenoid release or something for some of them sometimes. Am I talking crazy or? Yeah. I mean, that, that, I mean, sphenoid release is good for everyone, right? You know? <laughs> yeah. Not just EDS, but you guys can improve. I know that's a label they give you, but you can improve the symptomatology and have more of a normal life. You just need to get your recipe and you gotta trace back your history. When did things come up? When did antecedents or triggers happen to you and symptoms sort of started piling on, right? Really yeah. important. Yeah. So, I think we did it, Dr. Christine. I think we've answered all the questions. Um, we didn't have as many people live as I was hoping for. So what I'm gonna do is send this video out to everyone who registered. And then I will send it to you and I will send um, for whatever you want to do on your site and we'll put it on wellness plus for all the members. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Jess. This was a lot of fun. I hope this was helpful and it's always so fun being in um, your presence and your community. So thank you so much. Of course. Thank you guys for attending. Thank you for asking really it's an intelligent audience. I appreciate all you guys so much. Um, and thank you for all the sweet thoughts and prayers for me too. We, we, they don't go unnoticed and we really appreciate guys. They said they could listen all day and thank you. So. Oh. <laughs> Dr. Well, Christine. Well, we'll be in touch, I'm sure. And thank you, Jess, again. Um, and love to you guys. And we'll, we'll see you soon. Bye, guys. Good luck with your lumps. Mm -hmm. Bye. Bye.